Hello, and welcome from JLG. On behalf of all the employees worldwide who make up the JLG team, we'd like to extend our thanks for selecting a JLG lift. You and your employer made a smart decision by specifying a JLG DVSP stock picker lift. We'd like to take just a few minutes to acquaint you with the functions and operation of this lift. By following the recommendations for safe and proper operation of this machine, by viewing this videotape, and reading and understanding the operators and safety manuals, you accept responsibility for the safe and proper operation of your JLG lift. This presentation does not relieve the user operator from the responsibility of obtaining, reading, and fully understanding the applicable operators and safety manual and other information provided by the manufacturer and your employer. In addition, the operator and employer are responsible for complying with federal, state, local, or provincial rules and regulations covering the proper use and operation of this product. If there is a question on application and or operation, contact the Product Safety and Reliability Department at JLG Industries Incorporated at 877-JLG-SAFE. The Operators and Safety Manual, a safety handbook, and a copy of the ANSI Responsibilities, ANSI A92.6, can be found in a plastic compartment located on the platform. These documents must be kept with the machine and, if not available, may be obtained by calling 877-JLG-SAFE, 877-554-7233. Before each use, a walk-around inspection must be conducted to make sure that there is no visible damage, loose parts, or hydraulic fluid leakage. The Operators and Safety Manual contains a complete inspection procedure that must be followed. This inspection includes the following. Fun the drive wheels and casters, base frame, and pothole protection system, the battery and battery charger installation, the hydraulic motor pump and reservoir unit, control valve, manual release valve, ground controls, the mast installation, including the mast chains, mast cover, electrical cables, and sequencing cables, the platform assembly, including the control and power cables, guard rails, entrance gate, and platform controls. Be sure to inspect the legibility of all placards and the overall cleanliness of the machine during the walk-around inspection. If there is any evidence of a problem, shut down the lift, remove it from service, and notify the proper personnel. Before operating the lift, check to make sure that you have the proper personal protective equipment. This may include an approved fall protection device as specified by your employer. Neither ANSI SIA or OSHA require the use of approved fall protection devices when using self-propelled elevating work platforms. However, JLG recommends that any personnel on the platform of the lift use an approved fall protection device with a lanyard attached to an authorized lanyard anchorage point. The DVSP stock picker lift model is equipped with an authorized lanyard anchorage point located on the platform top rail near the mast. Use of an approved fall protection device is required while operating the DVSP lift equipped with a stock picker platform having retractable rails. The DVSP lift has two control stations the ground control station located at the rear of each lift and the platform control station located in the platform. The ground control station has four controls. The power select key switch is a three position key operated switch that provides power to either the ground or platform controls. Some lifts may be equipped with an optional keypad security lock that requires a four digit code to activate the power. The emergency stop switch, when depressed, shuts off all power to all functions. Turn the red button clockwise a quarter turn to reset the emergency stop switch. 
Lift up and lift down functions are activated by pressing either the lift up or lift down buttons. Platform movement stops when the selected switch is released. The brake release button disengages the brakes when pressed. The brakes must be disengaged when moving the machine by pushing, using a forklift, or when winching the machine onto a truck bed. The brakes are re-engaged by pressing the brake release button a second time or by switching the platform ground select switch to the off or platform positions. The brakes must be engaged before the machine will operate the lift up function from the ground control station. The brakes must only be disengaged when the machine is placed on a level surface or when the machine is fully restrained to prevent inadvertent movement. The manual descent valve is a hydraulic valve located at the base of the machine that can be used to lower the platform in the event that the operator is unable to do so from the platform. To open the manual descent valve and lower the platform, push the plunger knob. Once the platform is fully lowered, release the plunger knob, closing the valve, which will return it to normal operation. The platform cannot be elevated with the manual descent valve held open. The platform control station also has four controls. The emergency stop switch is similar to the one at the ground control station and shuts off power to the all functions when depressed. Turn the red button clockwise a quarter turn to reset the emergency stop switch. To enable the lift up and down functions, press and release the platform function button. The lift up and lift down functions are then controlled by the joystick in conjunction with the enable button positioned on the joystick. The enable button must be continuously depressed to elevate or lower the platform. The joystick is proportional and the lift up and down speed can be increased up to the maximum speed selected by increasing the movement of the joystick. To enable the drive function, press and release the drive function button. The drive forward, reverse, and steer functions are then controlled by the joystick in conjunction with the enable button position on the joystick. The enable button must be continuously depressed to drive the lift. The joystick is proportional and the drive speed can be increased up to the maximum speed selected by increasing the movement of the joystick. The maximum drive speed can be adjusted by depressing the turtle button to reduce and the rabbit button to increase the maximum drive speed. The maximum drive speed can be adjusted to a maximum of 2.5 miles per hour with the platform fully lowered. When the platform is elevated above one foot, the maximum drive speed is automatically reduced to a quarter of the maximum speed available as with the platform fully lowered. If the maximum drive speed does not reduce when the platform is elevated above one foot, shut down the machine, remove it from service, and notify the proper personnel. Your DVSP lift may be equipped with a standard stock picker platform, a molded platform with a material tray, or an extendable platform. Ensure that the gate is in its closed and latched position before operating the lift. The platform railing of the standard stock picker platform is designed for flexible setup. The rails in the operator's area nearest the mast are fixed, but the front gate and side rails may be set up in either a closed configuration with railing surrounding the entire platform or in one of three open configurations. Each side opens independently, allowing just one or both sides to be opened at the same time. The front gate and side railings may be opened by pulling the locking pins near the platform floor and swinging the railings to their open positions. When in the open position, the front top rail of the operator's portion of the platform must be in the raised position before operating the lift. Also, make sure that all locking pins have seated fully into the locking holes in the railings. Failure to do so may allow the rails to swing out during raising and lowering of the platform, resulting in damage to the rails and surroundings. Some machines equipped with a standard stock picker platform may have the side rails fixed in the closed position as required by the machine's owner. Set the platform rails in the desired configuration and check that all rails are securely locked in place by the locking pins. Before elevating the platform, the lift must be positioned on a smooth, firm, and level surface. 
The lift is equipped with a tilt sensor and lockout function that disables the elevation control when the lift is positioned on a slope greater than one and a half degrees. With the platform elevated, the drive control is disabled when the lift is driven onto a slope greater than one and a half degrees. Turn the power select key switch to the platform position and reset the emergency stop switch at the ground control station by turning the red button quarter turn clockwise. The lift is now ready to be operated. The maximum capacity of the DVSP stock picker which is displayed on the platform decals and in the operators and safety manual. This rated capacity includes the weight of the operator, tools and equipment, and anything placed in the platform, including stock items. Care should be taken to never exceed the rated capacity. When entering or exiting the platform, always face the lift and use the three-point contact method, which means two hands and one foot, or one hand and two feet are in contact with the platform at all times. Enter the platform and properly secure the lanyard for your fall protection device to the designated anchorage point. Position the emergency stop switch at the platform control station to the on position. To elevate the platform, press and release the platform function button. Press and hold the joystick enable button and push the joystick forward. The platform will automatically stop moving when the maximum height is reached or when the joystick enable button is released. Before lowering the platform, always first check the area below the platform to make sure that this area is clear. Push and release the platform function button, press and hold the joystick enable button, and pull the joystick back to lower the platform. Always lower the platform to the fully lowered position before exiting the platform. To drive the machine, push and release the drive function button, press and hold the joystick enable button, and then position the joystick in the desired direction of travel. The JLG DVSP model is equipped with a pothole protection system that lowers into place when the platform is raised, providing additional support for the lift in the event a wheel is driven into or positioned over an unprotected floor opening. When driving with the platform elevated, the JLG pothole protection system must be fully lowered into position. If the pothole protection system's bar comes into contact with an obstruction that prevents it from being fully lowered into position, a drive cutout system activates and the drive function will not operate. Verify that the drive cutout system operates properly before operation. While the platform is lowered, place a piece of lumber or other appropriate material under one of the pothole protection bars. Raise the platform and verify that the bar does not completely lower when it comes into contact with the lumber. Activate the drive function. If the drive function operates under this condition, shut down the machine, remove it from service, and notify the proper personnel. Repeat this test for the opposite side. If any function selected does not stop when intended, push the emergency stop button. Then, if the platform is elevated, seek the assistance of someone to lower the platform using the manual descent valve located at the base of the machine. Immediately notify the appropriate personnel and remove the lift from service until the problem has been corrected. Some general safety precautions must be followed during operation of a JLG DVSP stock picker lift. Do not operate any machine on which the safety or instruction placards or decals are missing or illegible. Ensure all safety devices are operating properly. Modification of these devices is a safety violation. Never operate a machine that is not working properly. If a malfunction occurs, shut down the machine. Check the work area for any overhead objects, including electrical lines. The lift is not electrically insulated. Maintain a safe distance and clearance from electrical lines and electrical apparatus. Allow for machine movement and electrical line swaying. Refer to the operators and safety manual for safety precautions concerning power lines. Failure to comply with these instructions in the operators and safety manual concerning power lines may result in serious personal injury or death. Ensure that operators of other overhead and floor level machines are aware of the lift's presence. Disconnect power to overhead cranes. Warn personnel not to work, stand, or walk under a raised platform. 
position barricades on floor as necessary. Do not operate the machine when wind conditions exceed 30 miles per hour or 12 meters a second. Do not operate or raise the platform while on trucks, trailers, railway cars, floating vessels, scaffolds, or other equipment unless approved in writing by JLG. Do not raise the platform or drive from an elevated position unless the machine is on a firm, level, evenly supported surface. During operation, keep all body parts inside the platform railings. Check the work area for clearances overhead, on the sides, and under the platform when lifting and lowering the platform or driving. Position all cargo on the platform floor. Do not carry materials on the platform railings. Keep both feet firmly positioned on the platform floor at all times. Never use ladders, boxes, steps, planks, or similar items on the platform to provide additional reach. Always ensure that power tools are properly stowed and never left hanging by their cord from the platform work area. Avoid any buildup of debris on the platform floor. Keep mud, oil, grease, and other slippery substances from footwear and platform floor. For DVSP lifts equipped with an extendable platform, do not drive the machine unless the platform extension is properly secured in place. Keep the chassis of the machine a minimum of 2 feet, 0.6 meters, from holes, bumps, drop-offs, obstructions, debris, concealed holes, and other potential hazards at the ground level. Be aware of stopping distances in all drive speeds. Before driving on floors, bridges, trucks, and other surfaces, check the allowable capacity of these surfaces. The user should be familiar with the work area surface before driving. Do not exceed the allowable side slope and grade while driving. Exercise extreme caution at all times to prevent obstacles from striking or interfering with the operating controls and persons in the platform. Limit travel speed according to conditions of ground surface, congestion, visibility, slope, location of personnel, and other factors causing hazards of collision or injury to personnel. Do not drive at high speeds in restricted or close quarters or when driving in reverse. Always post a lookout when driving in areas where vision is obstructed. Keep non-operating personnel at least 6 feet or 1.8 meters away from the machine during all driving operations. Do not elevate the platform or drive with the platform already elevated while on a slope. Avoid uneven or soft surfaces. To shut down and park the machine, first drive the machine to a well-protected and ventilated area. Ensure the platform is fully lowered. Push in the emergency stop buttons at the platform and ground controls. Position the platform ground select switch to off and remove the key to prevent unauthorized operation. If necessary, cover the platform controls to protect instruction placards, warning decals, and operating controls from hostile environmental conditions. Remember to uncover prior to operation. Chalk at least two wheels when parking the machine for an extended period of time. Always charge the battery in a well-ventilated area. The DVSP lift is equipped with an automatic battery charger that will stop charging when the battery is fully charged. The battery can therefore be charged daily without concern for overcharging and damage to the battery. To initiate charging, plug the female end of an extension cord, rated for 10 amps, into the charge plug receptacle at the rear of the lift and the other end into a standard 110 volt outlet. The charger will perform a diagnostic check of the battery's charge level and, with the lights on the face of the charger, will provide an indication of the status of the battery's charge level. The lights also indicate if the battery is bad and unable to take a charge. Before transporting a JLG DVSP lift, completely empty the platform of tools and debris and fully lower the platform. 
Never allow personnel on the platform while moving the machine by any means other than driving. Other than driving the machine, a JLG DVSP lift may be transported from place to place by several different methods. The machine may be moved by pushing it on its base wheels. It may be moved by a forklift truck. Or the machine may be transported by truck. Prior to moving the machine by pushing, using a forklift, or when winching the machine onto the truck bed, the power must be turned off and the brakes disengaged. Disengage the brakes by pressing the brake release button located at the ground control station. The brakes are re-engaged by pressing the brake release button a second time or by switching the platform ground select switch to the off or platform positions. The brakes must be engaged before the machine will operate in a lift up function from the ground control station. The brakes must only be disengaged when the machine is placed on a level surface or when the machine is fully restrained to prevent inadvertent movement. When using a forklift truck to move a JLG DVSP lift, the forklift pockets on the base frame must be utilized. When traveling over rough terrain, go slowly. Tilt the forks so that the machine will not slide off of them. Follow all precautions outlined in the forklift manufacturer's operating and safety manuals. When transporting the machine by truck, refer to the operators and safety manual for proper loading, unloading, and tie-down procedures. The truck used for transport must be rated for the weight of your machine. The truck must be on a level surface. Never load or unload while on a slope. If the JLG DVSP lift must be lifted to another level by use of a crane or other similar means, the optional crane hook must be installed and utilized. If your JLG DVSP lift is equipped with a rug carrier accessory or an obstruction sensing system, the following information is provided on a safe and proper operation of these accessories. The lift shown in the rug carrier accessory and obstruction sensing system segments is a VPSP lift. These accessories work in the same manner for the DVSP lift that is the subject of this video. The rug carrier accessory is available only on the JLG DVSP and earlier VPSP models and is not authorized for use with any other JLG lift. The rug carrier accessory is intended for use in hanging and removal of rugs in hanging display racks only. Use for any other purpose is not authorized by JLG. The rug carrier accessory consists of two pivoting arms mounted to the platform left side rails. The pivoting arms are locked in the plane of the platform side rail when not in use, the stowed position. The arms are locked into position at approximately 90 degrees to the left side platform side rails when in use, the carry position. The pivoting arm's position can be changed by lifting each arm to release the lock, rotating the arm, and lowering each arm back into the lock position. Include the rug carrier accessory in the walk around inspection. Ensure that the pivoting arms lock in place prior to use. Never use a rug carrier accessory that is damaged or has loose mountings. Immediately report any damage to appropriate personnel. Discontinue use of the rug carrier accessory until all discrepancies have been corrected. To use the rug carrier accessory to hang a rug on a display rack arm, first select the intended location in the display for mounting the rug. Open the display rack to provide adequate space for the lift and rug. With the rug carrier accessory arm stowed, drive the lift into position prior to loading the rug. Swing and lock the rug carrier accessory arms into the carry position. Load the rolled rug as shown. As required, use an assistant to load the rug onto the rug carrier accessory arms. The length of the rolled rug should not exceed 9 feet and the diameter should not exceed 12 inches. Make sure that the rug is centered over its length on the rug carrier accessory and does not exceed 150 pounds in weight. Properly position the lift with respect to the display rack arm prior to elevating the platform. 
Elevate the platform to the required height for mounting the rug onto the display rack arm. Properly attach the rug to the display rack arm. Never climb onto the platform rails for any reason. After properly attaching the rug to the display arm, lower the platform to unroll the rug. Stow the rug carrier accessory arm. As required, reposition and elevate the lift to assure the rug is properly secured to the display rack arm. To use the rug carrier accessory to remove a rug from a display rack arm, first select the intended location in the display for removal of the rug. Open the display rack to provide adequate space for the lift and rug. Prior to removal, verify that the weight of the rug does not exceed 150 pounds or 9 feet in length when rolled up. With the rug carrier accessory arm stowed, drive the lift into position such that the rug carrier accessory will be centered on the rug prior to loading the rug. Swing and lock the rug carrier accessory arms into the carry position. Start to roll the rug up onto the rug carrier accessory arms as shown. Make sure that the rug is centered over its length on the rug carrier accessory. While elevating to the required height for removing the rug from the display rack arm, roll the rug as shown. Properly remove the rug from the display rack arm. Never climb onto the platform rails for any reason. After removing the rug from the display rack arm, lower the platform. Remove the rug from the rug carrier accessory. As required, use an assistant to unload the rug from the rug carrier accessory arms. Stow the rug hanger accessory arms. When utilizing a JLG lift equipped with a rug carrier accessory, the following precautions must be observed. The rug carrier accessory arms must be locked in the stowed position when not in use. Never overload the rug carrier accessory. Maximum capacity of the rug carrier accessory is 150 pounds, and the maximum capacity of the platform is 500 pounds, including personnel, materials, equipment, and any load on the rug carrier accessory. Extreme caution must be exercised at all times while the rug carrier accessory is in use including driving and raising and lowering the platform to prevent obstacles and personnel from striking the load. Whenever driving with a rug suspended by the rug carrier accessory, the rug must be properly secured so as to prevent inadvertent movement of the rug. The Obstruction Sensing System, or OSS, is designed to detect the presence of obstructions under the platform that are present in the detection zone. The system consists of a central electronics module connected to an array of six ultrasonic sensors located on the underside of the platform. These sensors transmit ultrasonic sound beneath the platform and detect the presence of obstructions under the platform, which are within the detection zone. This detection zone extends approximately 3 inches from the edges and up to 22 inches from the bottom of the platform. If an obstruction is present in the detection zone, the OSS will stop the lowering of the platform until the obstruction is removed or the operator overrides the system. The OSS does not affect the ground control functions. When power is applied to the platform controls, the red LED on the electronics module located in the platform will illuminate. If no obstructions are located within the detection zone beneath the platform, the lift will operate normally. If an obstruction is detected within the detection zone beneath the platform, the platform will stop lowering, the LED on the electronics module will flash, and the horn will sound three times. If an obstruction is detected, have the obstruction cleared by someone on the ground or carefully drive the lift until clear of the obstruction. Reset the OSS by pressing the horn button once and continue normal operation. Should it be determined that the OSS falsely detected an obstruction, the system can be overridden by pressing and holding the horn button while operating the lift down function. 
Always be certain the area under the platform is clear of obstructions before lowering the platform. A daily inspection and function check of the OSS must be included in the overall walk-around inspection and functional check performed by the operator. During the walk-around inspection, include an inspection of the electronics module and sensor array for physical damage, loose wires, and loose mounting hardware. To perform a function check, use the following procedure. From the ground controls, raise the platform approximately 5 to 6 feet. Ensure the red LED on the electronics module located in the platform is illuminated. Place a pad of paper or other suitable obstruction under one of the sensors of the sensor array within approximately 6 to 12 inches. The LED of the electronics module must flash and remain flashing while the obstruction is present and must stop flashing 3 seconds after the obstruction is removed. Repeat this procedure for the remaining 5 sensors. If the OSS malfunctions or operates improperly, shut down the lift, remove it from service, and notify the proper personnel. Once again, it's important to complete your work safely using the JLG DVSP lift. To do so, you must use the information provided in this presentation, the operator's manual, the decals on the lift, and common sense. If you require further clarification on any portion of this video presentation, or the safe operation of your JLG lift, contact the Product Safety and Reliability Department at JLG Industries Incorporated at 877-JLG-SAFE, 554-7233, or via email at productsafety at jlg.com. And again, from all of the employees at JLG Industries Incorporated, thanks for purchasing a JLG DVSP stock picker lift.